If they don't work this year, they're out. The gods are flawed, my man. That's their whole point. You're supposed to learn from their flaws and not repeat them. What are you talking about? There are words in there. I know what the words mean separately, but together, I have no idea. Like, what? <laughs> And if you're new here, hi, my name is Daniela, and I want to talk about some books. So at the beginning of the year, I've made a list in my reading journal about some of the books that I've previously started that I just couldn't get into and didn't finish. So I was like, this is the year, 2024, I am doing it. I am reading this. No matter what, I will finish them. So it's now 2024 and I'm like, I gotta get onto it. And I was looking at my reading journal, which is over here, and like I wrote them all down. And at the start of the year, there were 12 books, which is great because they're 12 months. So it's easy to just navigate them because you put like one book a month. Um, and I've currently read three of them, which good job, me. Um, but it's currently April almost the end of April and I still haven't read the book for this month so I have to get a move on but um, I just want to talk about the books that I'm supposed to read till the end of the year I haven't mentioned them previously but I want to get into them right now so maybe I will motivate myself to read them like I really want to read them but some of them are thick like thick the definition of the word thick so um let me tell you all about them. They're over here, so I'm going to put them out and then we'll talk about them. These are the books. Can you see all of them? It's, it's ridiculous. Like, it shouldn't be that difficult. But look at them. Do you see how thick they are? It's ridiculous. Like, whoa, whoa, please don't fall, please don't fall, please don't fall. Okay, okay, okay. Let's talk about them. I'm going to talk about them in the order that I've written them in my reading journal, even though that means absolutely nothing. I, nothing. So the first book is Don Quixote by Cervantes, and this was translated by P.A. Motu in 1712. It's a very, very old book. Also, this is giant, but there are two volumes. So I have read the first volume, this one, and then I still have to read the second volume. So this book talks about Don Quixote, who's a rich gentleman who's very tall and thin, and he's very passionate about books of uh, knight errants and just their adventures and the chivalry and the uh, just the saving of the ladies and all that. So he wants to become a knight and he sets on, on this adventure and on the way he meets a... Um, I think Sancho was a, a, a farmer and his name was Sancho Panza and he's quite short and fat so it's quite a difference between them which is a bit amusing um, but they go on these adventures and it's the most ridiculous thing ever because by, in the time when Don Quixote leaves no one needs knights anymore it just makes no sense it's a very absurd book it's it's a satire in a way of all those, um, how would you call them, um, books of chivalry. It makes fun of them and it's just such a good book. Personally, I really liked the first volume. I did think that um, he used a lot of words that were not necessary, meaning that this could have been so much shorter, so much shorter. but. It's really interesting, it's funny, it's not the kind of book you read in one go, it's the kind of book you just read a chapter and then you kind of process it and you read a little bit more and you let it steep and overall it's a really nice book but it is thick, thick and look at this, it's tiny, like it's ridiculously tiny but I do love Don Quixote's adventures so I am thrilled to continue reading this and I really, 
hope that I managed to finish this, but um, just picking up this book is terrifying because big book fear is a very real fear. So here's to reading it. So this was the first book. So the next book that I want to finish this year is Malmouth the Wanderer by Charles Maturin. This is an Irish writer. And this book, let me read you the back, is uh, the story of Malmoth, who had sold his soul in exchange for immortality in a satanic, 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 satan, satanic, satanic, hmm. Okay, so this is uh, the story of Malmoth, who has sold his soul in exchange for immortality in a satanic bargain and now preys on the helpless in their darkest moments, offering to ease their suffering if they will take his place and release him from his centuries of tortured wandering. Malmoth the Wanderer blends gothic fiction and psychological realism to create a work of hallucinatory power. So, yeah, I read quite a bit of it. I'm uh, here, as you can see. So I've read a big chunk of it. This was a gift from my friend Soap, so thank you. Um, the cover is absolutely stunning. Like, I love this. Everything Penguin publishes is just so beautiful. Um, but I just, I don't know. Again, it's one of those books where the authors just love using words. They love them. I just, how? How do you have this many words to say? It's just, just, ugh. and the writing again is it's quite small, um, but the story in itself is quite interesting. At least uh, the part that I've read, it's um, it's very bizarre. Somehow there's a ghost in there, and something about a painting, and this guy that's on his deathbed. If if I'm correct. Um, it's been a while since I picked this up, but um, I do look forward to just g getting back into it and maybe finishing it, hopefully finishing it. So yeah, this was Melma of the Wanderer. The next book is Moby Dick or The Whale by Herman Melville. Once again, a brick of a book. And when I read it, I felt like I read so much of it. I got so much of the story. And I really didn't, like, I really didn't. Look, this is all I read. And this is how much I still have left. <sighs> I just, so Moby Dick is basically the story of this sailor, Ishmael, who just wants to kill a whale. That's, that's pretty much the whole thing. So I don't know what he has to write this much about. It feels like a crime. Like, what are you doing? Who allowed you this? It's ridiculous. So let me read you the back. You probably, everyone knows about Moby Dick, but let me give you a reminder. So this is um, when the young Ishmael gets on board Captain Ahab's whaling ship. Little does he expect that the mission on which he's about to embark is the fulfillment of his ma master's obsessive desire for revenge on Moby Dick a white whale who has already claimed countless human victims and destroyed many fleets. With some sinister crew members in their midst and the hazardous conditions of the sea to contend with, the expedition becomes increasingly dangerous the closer it gets to its quarry. One of the great American novels, if not the greatest, Moby Dick epically combines rip-roaring adventures, a meticulously realistic portrayal of the whale trade, and a profound philosophical distinction of the nature of good and evil. So when they say meticulous, they mean meticulous because the amount of details in this book about whaling are unnecessary, completely and utterly unnecessary. Nobody needs to know that much about a whale spear. Maybe some people, but there are museums for that. Just, just go to the museum. Like, why do you have to write this much? this much and complaining so much but I really want to read this and say that I've read Moby Dick because I don't know the beginning was very weird there was this like Ishmael goes to this place to sleep they don't really have a room so they give him a room there's another person with uh, and he has to share and they have to sleep in the same bed like oh my god there was only one bed 
and they sleep naked for some reason like for absolutely no reason at all so that's all i've got from this book so i'm looking forward to reading the rest i don't know it's just this was moby dick next we have david copperfield by charles dickens and honestly i've read this such a long time ago like started reading this such a long time ago that i don't even remember what happened in this um as you can see i read very little of it and i still have a ton and the thing is look at this look at this what is it with giant books and tiny tiny writing offense david copperfield is a quintessential novel by england's most beloved novelist based in part on dickens own life it is the story of a young man's journey from an unhappy and impoverished childhood to the discovery of his vocation as a successful novelist. Among its gloriously vivid cast of characters, he encounters his tyrannical stepfather, Mr. Murdstone, his formidable aunt, Betsy Trotwood, the eternally humble yet treacherous Oria Heap, the frivolous enchanting Dora, and one of Literature's great comic creation, magnificently impecunious, I don't even know what that word is, uh, Mr. Micawber, a character resembling Dickens' own father. In David Copperfield, the novel he described as his favorite child, Dickens drew revealingly on his own experiences to create one of his most exuberant and enduringly popular works, filled with tragedy and comedy in equal measure. This is such such a long book once again too many words were used far too many words but i still want to read it regardless um so i've read 50 pages from this book i don't remember anything i remember he was a young boy and something about a boat but i don't remember anything else from it and I should probably start from the very beginning just to really acquaint myself with the characters but do I care enough? No, no I do not. So I will be continuing from where I left off. I don't care if I don't remember characters. The amount of characters in this book I'm bound to forget them even if I read them. So this is David Copperfield. Wish me luck everybody. I will definitely need it. Next I'm going to talk about two books at the same time, regardless of the order in my reading journal, because they're both in French. I don't really know French that well. I do have the Delft B2 um, level, which is like a big French test, but I don't know French that well. But my friends, my sweet, wonderful friends, decided to give me two books in French. So here are they. The first book I have is La Vie en Fleur by um, Anatole Franz. I have no idea what this book is about. It's a very, very beautiful book. Like this book, stunning. I want to show you how much it's like gold. You can probably tell. You can probably tell. Um, again, it's just such a nice book. I, I love beautiful books. I'm one of those people. Um, so... Yeah, I have no idea what this book is about. It is in French, so I will be probably using Google Translate as well for some words that I do not know. And I do hope for my French skills to get slightly better, um, but we'll see. So this is a book from Gabi, thank you. And I'm excited to read it. This is La Vie en Fleur. So the next book I have is Au Prochain Arec by Hiro Arikawa. Um, this is a book by a Japanese author, Hiro Arikawa, uh, translated from Japanese uh, by Sophie Ressley. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, again, when I say I read it, I, I meant two pages. No, I read only one page, forgive me, just one page. Um, this was a gift from Soap, thank you very much. Um, I love Japanese authors and haven't read one in French yet, so we'll see how that is and I, I don't know, 
I'm excited to read it. It's short. It will take me a long time to read it because there will be inevitably some words, a lot of words, not just some, a lot that I don't necessarily know at a glance. Um, but again, let's get that French skill up. So we'll see how that goes. Um, also look how beautiful my bookmark is. Isn't this gorgeous? Can you see that? It's absolutely stunning. I got it as a gift from um, a coworker and they got this to me from Japan. So, so pretty, it's so beautiful. And I feel like this fits this book so well because of the cover, like, such a stunning cover. But yeah, I'm excited to read this and tell you all about it, especially since I will be reading it in French. So yay. After that, I have Wintering Heights by Emily Bronte. I don't even remember when I started reading this book. I just know that like I started it and I was like, what? So I kind of put it back on my shelf. Um, but yeah, look, I was even in Brighton when I read it. So it's been a really, really long time because this is a ticket from 2019, Jesus Christ. Yeah, 2019. So. Bookmarks can be anything. This is a train ticket. Um, so, gosh, I've had this book for such a long time and I haven't read it. And it's 2024. Okay, so this book, Wintering Height, is the wild, passionate story of intense and almost demonic love between Catherine Earnshaw and Heath Heathcliff, a founding a foundling adopted by Catherine's father. After Mr. Can't even read the character's name properly. How am I supposed to read the entire book? Okay. After Mr. Earnshaw's death, Heathcliff is bullied and humiliated by Catherine's brother, Hindley, and wrongly believing that his love for Catherine is not reciprocated, leaves Wintering Heights, only to return years later as a wealthy and polished man. He proceeds to exact a terrible revenge for his former miseries. The action of the story is chaotic and unremittingly violent, but the accomplished handling of the complex structure, the evocative descriptions of the lonely moorland settings, and the poetic grandeur of vision combine to make this unique novel a masterpiece of English literature. The characters' names? Absolutely absurd. I'll just like look over them, my eyes will like immediately skip them. First letter, okay. The others just immediately skip them. Again, as, as much as I've read so far, it's about this guy that gets lost um, on the way and it's night and rain. So these people let him stay over the night. They're not very nice people. Um, and it's just about their terrible life. This is as much as I've read so far. Again, I've abandoned this in like 2019, so I do not remember what this this is. So let's hope we'll read it this year. There is hope, tiny as it is, there is hope. Now, if that book was confusing, this one is worse. This is a portrait of the artist as a young man by James Joyce and um, I bought this in a coffee shop, well, in a library because I forgot my book. I bought this last year, by the way, because I'm on a book buying ban this year. I bought this last year in a library because I forgot my book at home. And honestly, I can't tell you what it's about because it's so confusing. I just, there are words in there. I know what the words mean separately, but together, I have no idea like what so confusing um but on the back of the book this says autobiographical in tone Joyce's tale of Stephen Dedalus's journey into adulthood explores the intellectual and moral development of an artist as he struggles to overcome the ingrained catholic consciousness of his childhood a family life governed by Irish history religion and politics realistic and innovative in its approach, Joyce expertly encapsulates the development of individual consciousness and the role of the artist in society in what is considered one of the greatest works. 
even by the back of the book, I have no idea what the book is about. So this tells you everything you need to know about the book. But I will get through it. It's not a long book either. Oh my God, is that how tiny the writing is? Why do they do this? Like they know it's a terrible book. Why make the writing so tiny? No common sense. Um, but this is like without all the words. Okay, so this is like 262 pages without the appendix. So doable, I would say. I would be lying to myself, but I will say that. Um, and we'll see. We'll see how we will fare. I just, now that I'm talking about all these books, I don't know how the hell I'm going to read them because they're just so long and boring. And even if the essence is interesting, there's just a lot of words that are unnecessary in these books or that it just don't make sense. So we'll see if they don't work this year, they're out. So, and the last book on the list is Republic by Plato. This book is, it says on here, is published around 380 BCE. Plato's most famous work explores through a Socratic dialogue the concept of justice along with how justice affects one's happiness. Socrates discusses these philosophical ideas with interlocutors using the example of an imaginary perfect state. Considered to be one of the most influential writing in the development of Western philosophy and political theory, Republic is as relevant today as when it was originally published. And I've read quite, quite a lot of it. I've read this much. It, it doesn't look like quite a lot when, you show it, when I show it to you like this, but I did read quite a lot of it. And it's just... Like, it's not that difficult to read. It's not easy, but it's not that difficult to read. But it's just... It's just a bunch of men just taking an issue and talking about it and making absolutely no sense. Like, there are some good points in there, but they have to scurry so much along the way to get to that one point that is just frustrating. At one point, you're like, get to the point. What are you talking about? And then there's some discussions about the gods and how they're perfect, that they can do nothing wrong. That makes absolutely no sense because the gods are the most flawed creatures that they made up. Because let's be honest here, the gods. Okay, so look, like this quote. If he was the son of a god, we maintain that he was not avaricious. Or if he was avaricious, he was not the son of the god. The gods are flawed, my man. That's their whole point. You're supposed to learn from their flaws and not repeat them. What are you talking about? So that's why I'm having quite the trouble getting through this because sometimes I just want to yell at them. I just want to go there and punch them so hard, like so hard. Um, but, you know, you can't do that violence against violence is a rule of beasts and all that so uh, the desire to punch them is there still also this cover is so beautiful i mainly bought it because of the cover like i did want to read it at one point but the cover is absolutely stunning i just i don't know what it is but i there's something about it that i really love so yeah that was the last book from the list there are how many did i say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine books that I still have to read. And they're such thick books as well. Like, how? How am I supposed to do this? Because technically, one a month sounds like perfectly manageable. But then, these are the kind of books I have to deal with. The half your face kind of books. So one a month just becomes a lot but even getting through half of these will be fantastic will be just just amazing i don't know will be just great i i really get, want to get through them because i don't know they're really thick books and i've started them such a long time ago as well like especially wintering heights maybe i've grown maybe i'll understand something now I don't promise it, 
but maybe I will. So yeah, thank you for listening to me ramble for such a long time. Those were the books that I plan on finishing by the end of the year, hopefully, because honestly, hope is all I have. Patience, none. So let's hope we have hope. Yes, perfect sense. Um, if you have books that you've started a long time ago and you want to tell me about them, tell me, complain in the comment section so we can be here together. So I can know that I'm not the only person that reads the book and just leaves it on the bookshelf when they just don't feel like reading them and leave them for ages. So please tell me about it. Also like the video if you liked it and subscribe because I'm a lovely person. I promise I am. And I do read most of the books that I read. Well, most of them. So yeah, I'll, I'd love to see you again. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. I just give the earth my soul. Hear my thoughts bounce off the walls.